sont-elles? Où sont-elles les personnes qui devaient le surveiller? Nathalie Langlois wants to know where the guards were when her brother hanged himself at Atlantic Institution in New Brunswick. He'd tried to kill himself before, and the day before his death, after 118 days of solitary confinement, he picked up the phone. Bizarrement, il a appelé euh, plusieurs personnes à leur dire qu'il les aimait, euh, de jamais oublier qu'il les aimait. 38-year-old Guy Langlois had been serving time for killing a man in Montreal when he was 20. In his 18 years behind bars, he'd been beaten into a coma, medicated for mental health problems, and transferred nine times. On the day of his death, the prison was planning to move him yet again. Il voulait pas, il refusait le transfert en Colombie-Britannique, disant que ça va briser sa famille, que son couple, ça va mettre en péril son couple, son mariage. The family learned of Langlois' death when the police showed up at 11 p.m. the next night. A few days after that, the phone rang. On a eu un appel à 9 heures le soir, moi et sa femme, nous disant que le corps était pogné à l'aéroport, que fallait débourser 800 dollars cash pour sortir le corps de l'aéroport. On s'entend tu qu'il n'y a pas de friche d'air. Situations like this were well documented in a report released last year by Canada's correctional investigator. Many other parts of this story are also all too familiar. Here we have yet again a case of somebody who is a uh, long documented history of psychological distress and mental health issues uh, say, staying in segregation for, um, uh, for almost four months uh, and uh, hanging himself in segregation um, on the day that he was to be transferred across the country. For its part, the Correctional Service of Canada told CBC it's limited in what it can say. We have convened an internal board of investigation into Mr. Langlois' death. Any significant findings from the BOI will be reviewed and shared. And we work with third-party organizations for the cremation or delivery of an inmate's remains. Those remains, though, still aren't in the hands of the Langlois family. His ashes won't be released until the family pays in full for the funeral. Alison Crawford, CBC News, Ottawa.